So this is another way of, if we don't, if we haven't been taught and learned about wisdom, we won't know that there's a resource that's more intelligent than our computer. So every time we feel tension, we'll do what 99.9% .9 of adults do when they feel like they have a problem or an issue or are upset, confused, they'll think harder, like you said. Hmm. They don't immediately run to this openness where something new and fresh can come because we're just not, we haven't realized very deeply the magnitude of intelligence that's behind life that's waiting to pop through as soon as we're open to it or make space for it. Yeah. It's like some of the picture that comes to my mind when you say that's like a funnel. So when you're like when you're when you're if you don't if you have no concept of how wisdom works, you're stuck, you've got a problem, it's like you're traveling down this funnel and it only gets narrower and tighter and smaller and smaller and smaller. But we're like what you're pointing to is an invitation to 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 almost get a sense of the constriction of that funnel. And then like the other way, the opposite direction where a funnel opens up goes into infinite space. Right. Like there's no end to what's there. And it's it's when we head that way, then thoughts, new thoughts and inspiration, ideas, everything we're pointing to, like, you know, insight comes into our awareness or is revealed to us or however you want to say it but it's not done through the effortful whirring of the mind it shocked me like crazy the first time i heard sid say you can't analyze your way to wisdom because no one can it's impossible you can't think your way to truth you can't think your way to psychological well-being no one can you can do it. You can try. You can think maybe you'll be the first that can access wisdom through thinking about things with your computer. You'll, you'll, but you wouldn't go to your computer for love. You wouldn't marry your computer. You wouldn't go for true understanding. You would go for cool information, mm -hmm. which is the appropriate use of the tool. Let's go get cool information. I love Googling. Don't get me wrong. I love Googling. And I don't want to live in, in my Google world. I don't want to live in information because my kids complain and my wife complains. And you're not in the world. You're in your head. Please. One, one time I came home and I was so caught up in all my Google world my wife playfully came over and knocked on my forehead. She goes, hello. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm annoyed. What? She goes, are you going to come out tonight and play with us? Are you going to stay in there all night thinking about <laughs> Thinking about stuff. Thinking about stuff. Now, there's nothing wrong with thinking about stuff, but none of us were meant to live that way. And we've all experienced when we've fallen into the now, what happens? We feel better. We go on vacation. We don't feel better until we let go of what we're thinking, and then we start feeling better. Now, all of a sudden, we start realizing that can happen at any time, any place. Well, that, that's kind of the, the, the follow on to the next topic that we wanted to talk about, right? Which is a lovely, good segue. <laughs> See, look, yeah, thanks, was, Wisdom. Was, my video, my video. <laughs> but it's like we wanted to talk as well today about, um, so we wanted to talk about, um, you know, that link between wisdom and resilience and, the, and, the, and, and how that, that understanding allows us to navigate the ups and downs of life with more grace. Because that, that to me is, is no. you know, when I, right. when I hear clients, when I see comments in our Facebook group or clients and my clients are like, help, I'm having an up and down experience of life. No. Right? And, and, and nearly every story they share, they share, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I had that this week too. But it's there's more grace in my experience of the ups and downs of life now than they used to be. Yeah. And that, that 
is to my mind the only way i can explain that is as a result of to me it feels like when there's insight when 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 we touch that space it feels like something in my fundamental soul shifts right like a a, a, a place my 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 tiny mind cannot understand can't describe to you can't comprehend but there's like a soul shift right that no way of knowing that right or even the moment that it happens. But that space, that space that allows the soul shift is what changes our experience, our relationship to our moods, our relationship to our ups and downs, our relationship to our distress, our relationship to suffering, and gives us more grace with all of it. But that only happened because of a soul shift. No amount of psychology degrees and personal development and working on myself and has, and believe me, I've tried everything to try and change, manage and control my experience of ups and downs. Nothing, nothing made a difference until there was a soul shift and then everything changed. And I do have, you know, I have ups and downs, as do we all. And sometimes they're really ungraceful and messy, but I don't even, I'm more graceful with the fact that I'm not graceful all the time as well. Do you, do you know what I mean? We tie this into wisdom. We've been saying wisdom is a deeper intelligence that breaks through into human consciousness when our minds are open. And it breaks through in such a way that it lifts our spirits and it brings us new and fresh thinking that's helpful, practical, 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 helpful, responsive to our problems and issues and difficulties. That's why they say in case of emergency, stay calm. They don't say in case of emergency, think yourself out of the now into a frenzy. Because when we're calm, our minds are open, and we start to feel more present, and we get thinking that's helpful in that moment. So, uh, we, and it, and weirdly helpful as well. Like you just, I, as you're talking, brings to mind a client who was sharing in the in the group today that she was all caught up in thought, and she was having a really rubbish day, and she was really struggling with physical symptoms, and then. And then in a moment of quiet, like when I was watching the TV, right? But in other words, in a moment of quiet, when I stopped thinking about it, she said, I suddenly, I suddenly, for, it was really weird. I just got up and I started hosing down the outside of my house. And I messaged her back and said, I know this is a really weird question, but did you feel better afterwards? And she was like, yeah, weirdly I did. Now, if you'd, I had to come up with a solution to worrying about your physical no. symptoms with your own mind. Hosing down your house is probably not what you would have come up with. And I love the absolutely unexpected, totally random nature sometimes that can, that can arise through us that we could never have thought of ourselves. Like, and it's such a, it's, in a way, it's a tiny example. Yeah, but it's, it's, a good it's a great example because it's so like was just handed a totally unthought of thought that, that took her out of this feeling of like suffering and symptoms and like she knew what to do in the moment you know because people get that like oh if i understand this then i do nothing i just sit on my sofa and continue to suffer and and because it's just my thinking and but what i love is like no the with the ups and downs of life is it doesn't mean do nothing, like s s sit and suffer and wait it out, right? It means that for me, there's always the opportunity, and it doesn't even matter if we're caught up or not, but there's always the opportunity. We have the capacity for fresh thought in any moment to, you know, that transcends our habitual patterns and behaviors and actually does things like in the middle of a panic attack, it's the thing that helps you pull over to the side of the motorway when you can't even see straight. You know, it's, it's, it's not do nothing. It's like, here's the absolute most helpful thing in this moment for you. 
you know? And so, so navigating the ups and downs becomes easier because it's like, it's like you've always got a helping hand at your back. That's for me, one of my biggest insights, my most life changing insights right at the beginning of this conversation was when I was thinking about migraines all the time and had the insight that if and when it happens, you'll be taken care of. And I looked back and I saw that every single time I'd had a migraine, I'd managed to get myself safe. I'd managed to get my kids looked after. I'd managed to take my medication. I'd managed to get myself home. I'd managed to walk down a road. I'd managed to speak to someone even when I was unable to speak. I was like, I'd, when I looked, I had had always known what to do in the moment. And, and as a result, I had an idea that migraines would leave me screaming on the floor, dribbling, unable to walk in the middle of a busy street. And yet that never happened. So it's not, you know, it's an incredibly practical way that wisdom helps us navigate the ups and downs of life. Wisdom is built into life itself. If you take everything in the universe, it's all energy. It's all energy. That's the allness it talked about. <laughs> it's all, hey, we're just dancing around in a field of energy. Yeah. Everything is energy. That's what the scientists all say. Everything is energy and, and moving in and out of form. Yeah. And Sid's that's really, the isness. That's the isness bit. The world of form <laughs> is the isness. There you go. And and so there's always this dance of energy happen. And Sid's realization was that this field of energy is intelligent. That's how he defined we have a brain and we have a mind and our mind is actually this field of intelligent energy that thinks us, that lives us, that guides us. It's intelligent. And when we talk about human beings, rather than using the word intelligence, because most people when they think intelligence think IQ and they think mm -hmm. how well you're able to use your computer, Thank God there's an intelligence greater than that, or I'd be in trouble. <laughs> I used to worry when we took IQ tests. Whoa. <laughs> I'm sort of a, a problem child here. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck with my IQ. And Sid comes along and says that's one form of intelligence, but the intelligence behind all of life that knows how to create life and knows how to operate life, knows how to create universes, knows how to create human beings, knows how to create babies, and then make that little bundle of cellular energy function in a way that's beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh, my little four-month-old granddaughter is responsive and smiling now, and it won't be long. She'll be verbalizing and talking and running and playing. And there's an intelligence behind all of that. That knows how to operate it. I love it when you taught me that. Like that the nose can, can create in the world of form and then knows how to operate it. So the metaphor that's the oldest metaphor for psychological functioning is based on nature because it's talking about our nature. So it talks about the sun, which is the light that provides warmth and nourishment for life. There's blue sky, which is the context in which things exist. And then there's weather and clouds. Now, before I met Sid, I had cloudy weather a lot, anxiety, worry, whew, a lot, upset, confusion. Oh, God, I lived and, oh, my God, trying to figure stuff out and getting more and more confused. Should I do this? Should I do that? 
Um, everything in psychology was teaching me to work on that. So that would be like on a rainy day going outside and working on trying to improve the weather trying to push the rain back up in the sky, trying to get it to stop, trying to get it to be sunny, being all judgmental about the fact that it's raining. Sid comes along and says, well, weather is normal. You can't stop weather and you don't wanna fight weather. And the clouds are just created by our own thinking. Our worry, our upset, our feelings all come from our own thinking in the moment. And here's the deal. When we drop out of thinking, it's like rising above the clouds. They're still there, but you're rising above it, and all of a sudden there's blue sky. It's clarity. Our minds get clear. When we let go of our thinking very quickly, anybody, the minds get clear. You can call that pure consciousness. You can just call it being in the now. You can call it listening. They're just words. But our mind gets clear, and then when our mind gets clear, we can experience the warmth of the sun and it is vital for life and for nourishment. Now, psychologically, you take any person on this planet, when they either let go of everything they're thinking and it falls away, or they don't listen to or pay attention to what they're thinking, suddenly there's clarity. There's a blue sky. And always when people find that space within a presence, openness, clarity, there's a nice feeling. Mm. It's a warm feeling, a feeling that starts to connect us better to our kids and our life. And then in that feeling, as Sid taught, that's where wisdom shows up is in that feeling. Yeah. And it's a knowing that I loved your migraine story. You're upset. The instant you get present, you just start without even thinking about or figuring out what to do. You just start knowing how to make calls to help take care of your kids. You know, knowing how to go inside rather than laying down on the street and driveling. <laughs> oh, what an image. <laughs> oh, what an image. And there's just a knowing. It doesn't have to do with the intellect. We're no. driving our car. This is how practical this is. We're driving our car. If you're in your thinking, you're dead. You're going to have an accident. That's, I talk to state policemen who say every accident is because people are distracted. Whether drugs are involved or alcohol is involved, still being distracted by mm. everything. So we need to come into a place of openness, the now and listening. And then we just know when to turn. We're making life and death decisions without having to make them, without having to think them. That's the power of this intelligence. So we we're talking about resilience. Well, Sid said, boy, is it helpful for any human being to learn about the principle of thought. There's a power in life that's always generating our thinking, we're going to feel it. When we know that that's where our feelings come from, when we realize it's our own thinking that's keeping this weather pattern alive, this cloud cover, this thought storm alive, there's a natural tendency built into people to let go of what they know is causing them stress or distress, if they see that it's just thought. And then we fall up and we begin to let go of more and more of the thinking that weighs on us, that clouds us over. That's what resilience is. We start feeling better. And as we become more resilient, because we're letting go of thinking, that's the key. We're just, our minds have less on our minds, so we're more open. So more of that sun, more of that light, more of that warmth, more of that knowing flows through us. That's simple. There's a sounds so simple when you say it, right? But this is I remember I was talking about this in when I came to see you, but the the difference there's a difference between having thought that arises and and 
you know, you say like we realize we just we kind of we we tran we set that thinking down or we we oh you're just using a word there and it's gone out of my mind, but like we we <laughs> wake up to the fact of thought, right? And we wake up to the fact of thought, and then there's it's kind of like the idea about waking up to the idea of thought, right? Is I wake up, I realize, hang on a minute, this is just my thinking. I don't have to keep thinking like this. And then I try and stop that thinking because I don't have to keep thinking like that, right? And we've kind of woken up to the fact there's thought occurring and now we're in it trying to change that experience. There's a difference between that and waking up to the fact of thought yeah. in which case because yeah. you said like if you see something's harming you, you you just don't keep doing it now there's a difference it's so it feels so subtle but it's really key is or i'm really seeing is that when i'm trying to put down thought when i'm trying to um not keep thinking the same thing because i know it's harming me like i know this thought is distressing me so i surely i should be able to put it down right like i'm not seeing the nature of thought and how it works in that moment i'm really not like i'm 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 probably miles ahead from just being caught in it and absolutely just suffering with no idea what's going on but it's like i'm 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 suffering even more because i'm trying to manipulate thought in my experience because i haven't really woken up to the nature of thought in that moment versus the experience of we know when we have woken up to the nature of thought because what happens is that thought kind of dissolves into it expands out and dissolves into nothing and there's a difference between those two experiences and so much of the time i would get caught in that former of i know this must just be my thinking there's no point thinking it there's no i'm just ruining my own day (laughs) by thinking like this like it's harming me it's unhelpful i don't have to keep doing it but that's that's sometimes what we think is we call it sometimes people say like applying or doing something with the principles doing something with my understanding that that i can see its thought and, and what I see, what I, my alternative experience is, is those moments where something, like it gets seen as thought, something else sees it as thought almost. It's, I'm not exclaiming, it's, explaining, it's I'm not doing it, but thought is seen. This is the distinction between the two. And I think I've got to do it. That will be informational based learning, right? When it is truly seen, it comes, it's like a soul shift. You can't do it. You can't, you never put down thought. You never um, indulge in thought. You never lean into thought. You never can step away from thought. It's, it's, It's the seeing that, the knowing that something else does that on your behalf. Does that, does that make sense? But to me, it's a really key to me, that's the real you. Yeah. That's the real you. Yes. That you does yes. That yes. you recognizes it. Listen, you know, my, I love being with my wife because like you, I can talk about this and it sounds complicated. My wife is wonderful. She says, Dickon, you're either caught up in your thinking or you're not. Yeah. And so what I would do, the intellect is very tricky. And I was, I had a great intellect and I I always by habit leaned into my intellect. So when I learned the principles and I started learning about thought and thought creates my feelings and I all of a sudden I go, oh my God, I'm worrying up a storm. I spent the last hour thinking about this thing that's going to happen tomorrow. And it's just making me more and more anxious. Why am I thinking about that? Oh, I know I shouldn't be thinking about. And yeah, that's the what intellect I mean. <laughs> then just, we don't set, we don't close the friggin' laptop. You know, we tell our kids mm. all the time, you can't stay on the computer screen all day long. You can't do games all day long. Close the laptop. And there's a difference between having an open and closed. Now, a gamer who's committed to gaming 
and doesn't understand about wisdom, I'm playing my game and somebody says, close left. I say, okay, I will. Just a minute. I got to finish this last little thing. Oh, no, it won't take long. Oh, geez, I'm in another. Okay, wait. I'm... That's what I did psychologically forever and ever and ever. Sid says, if you really see thought, you completely close the laptop. What does that mean? You come back to listening. That's simple. Yeah. I've worked with people. I had a client, Nick, you like this story. I had this client who kept trying to think her way out of thinking. Yeah, no, uh, that's only every client, right? <laughs> and yeah, it wasn't all. Are you talking about me? <laughs> I did that for years, even after I started learning this. I'm trying to save people a lot of trouble here. Um, uh, she said to me after two sessions, she said, Dickon, this three principle stuff, oh, I'm sure it's great for really healthy people. I'm too messed up. This is too hard. I've been trying and like trying, trying yeah. and trying, and it's not working. This doesn't work for me. I don't think I want to, I can do this. I, I think I better find somebody else to work with. And I said, well, that's fine if that's what you'd like to do. I said, and this is what occurred to me in the moment. I had never done this before with a client ever. I just said, well, there's a secret to this. She goes, I knew it. I knew you weren't telling me the secret for how to do it. Yeah. And I said, okay, but in order for me to tell you this secret, you have to really listen to me. And if you really listen, I'll tell you. And she immediately closed the laptop because you can't listen unless you do. So immediately she just became fully present just listen. And I said, that's the secret. She goes, and you could see just the confusion. Of, there were sparks flying. She was short-circuiting. Her brain was short-circuiting. She goes, what? I said, that's the how-to. That's the secret. You want to know how to do this is you recognize thought and it brings you into the now. If you don't get to the now and rest there, you won't get anything new and fresh. As soon as you go back to your thinking, you've left the now. She goes, that's it? She goes, that's easy. <laughs> if, that, if that's what this is, <laughs> this is simple. It's, it's, that's insight. I saw, yeah. I saw the light bulb go off. That's the power of insight. Before that, she was intellectually trying to figure all of this stuff out, trying to figure out wisdom and thought. And then all of a sudden, she just realized, oh, I'm either thinking, like my wife says, I'm either caught up or I'm, or I'm not. Yeah. And when we're not, a different kind of thinking happens and a different kind of intelligence breaks through into our minds, into our being. Yeah.